Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining our utility session. To. So we're now entering the second part of our meeting. Four parts today. The first part we covered in the plenary session. We have uh, a couple of items before lunch and after lunch. And really, we want to take you on a journey, a journey from how do we translate what we heard this morning about IOE and IoT, bring it to the utilities industry. But then we would like for you to hear from our customers, from our partners, of how to make it real and how to grab benefit. And then at the end of the day, my colleague Ronnie will talk about some of the exploration that they're doing into new use cases. So if you made that step up into bringing IoT, IOE into your infrastructure, into your smart grid, what other capabilities does it bring you into venturing perhaps into power storage, power management, new business models to the home. But before we start there, and I probably should be using a lot of slides, but I, re I really like talking without slides. But I'm going to show it to you. So this, this is our schedule today. And I need to also do a little housekeeping. I'm so enthusiastic to hear from you. Because what I will do, oh, Am I? Just for the video. You cannot hear? Oh, for the video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I thought that uh, I was, nobody could hear me in, in the back. Um, for the video. Good. I'll give you a little heads up. I'll do a couple of slides of housekeeping, and then I will come back to each of you. If you could just take a couple of seconds to tell us who you are, from which company you're here, but also why you made the investment in time and in money to come here. So what is it that you're hoping to take away at the end of today and say, hey, this was a great conversation and I took away and is what I wanted. It was a good investment of my time and my money. So I'll, I'll come back to that after I've done a couple of housekeeping slides. Housekeeping. You see these Q codes. We have a great online system supporting this event with a opportunity for you to ask questions online, completely anonymous, and they are gathered by our colleagues in the back. And you can use this throughout the whole event. What you will also find on there is a survey. We always want to hear from you, how did you like the information? How did you like the speakers? Did it bring to you what you were looking for? That survey is also online. So you can use the Q code or you can use the URL to get to that online survey. And we really like to encourage you to use it. You know this. But anyway, if we keep, keep the phones on silent, that would be awesome. I talked about the app, the app. covered that. And I'm jumping completely to the end. We have a great program at the end, so we want you to stay all the way till the end. <laughs> but before that, I mean, We'll get back to this with our evening program, what sort of the schedule is with buses and what time you need to be where. But it's going to be a great evening. But with that, I really want to invite my first colleague. No, now I'm making a mistake because I was going to go to you first. And I'd like to hear from you. So let's do that. And is somebody making notes? But because I'm standing here and cannot make notes, but I'd really like to capture these questions. If I can go around, I'll give you the mic. I'll, I'll start with you, sir, if you don't mind. I'll give you the mic. If you can just pass it around, do a very quick introduction, and tell me what is it that you want to take away from today. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Siko Kai. Uh, today I expect that you know, how IOE can apply to my customer and my country, how 
can we help my country, my customer to utilize and uh, make them uh, work better than before? You're from, you're from Cisco Systems? Yeah. So if you could tell me from which company you are? Uh, Thailand. Okay. Good morning. I'm Song Pong from uh, PA Utility Company from Thailand. Just uh, I want to know about uh, new technology for IOE of an IoT. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Masatoshi Ishida. Now I'm working in the Singapore, but uh, actually today is the last day by <laughs> Singapore. Then I already assigned to the next job in Japan. But uh, my company is Murata Electronics. Uh, this is a very small, small uh, electronic device company. But uh, uh, just now we are uh, consideration about to expanding my business, uh, about IoT or something like that. Then today I want to learn more uh, from yours, and then the bring back Japan this information. Thank you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony from TNB Malaysia, electric power utility company. Uh, I'm here uh, basically to to see what Cisco has got to offer with regards to how utilities can transform their business from uh, traditional electricity business to uh, having more intelligence in the network, uh, connecting all devices together. We're also in the smart grid um, plan that we are moving uh, in the next 10 years, 20 years. Uh, we, are get, we are doing the smart metering project. So it's a lot of things that we think we can learn. Um, and also in distribution automation, uh, using devices to connect each other and, and the cybersecurity aspects of it too. So lots of areas. Uh, Cisco has been there with, with us for many years, and I think uh, we can see value uh, in this in, in this IoT forum. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Catherine, and I'm also from Tanaka National uh, Malaysia with Mr. Anthony. So basically, Mr. Anthony is our boss. So if he decides that this is important, I'll be leading the change management program for TNB in implementing the IoT and uh, IOE. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, good morning. I'm Intan. Same with Mr. Anthony and Catherine. I'm from Tanaga as well. Uh, currently, I'm doing innovation and smart grid. So I want, to, uh, I want to know more on IoT since IoT is uh, getting a bit popular now. So I want to get more understanding on it and what can be applied into my daily jobs. Hi, I'm Jeremy Laiko from Manila of the Philippines, a uh, water company. Uh, I'd like to learn more about IOE and I IoT and how we can implement it in the Philippines. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I'm sorry because uh, I'm uh, speaking English not very well. Uh, I'm from uh, Vietnam. Uh, I'm uh, work for uh, Power company. Uh, we uh, focus uh, on uh, smart grid, power smart grid. Yes. Um, we uh, want Cisco uh, build us the network infrastructure for smart grid. Thank you. Thank you very much. So in our program today, we have David from BC Hydro talking about how they implemented smart metering and smart grid and how th what the benefits are that they're getting out of their implementation. We have our colleague from ITRON who is going to explain to you how the technology works, what technology is being used. And we have our colleague, my colleague from Cisco, Ronnie, who's going to talk about the new technologies that they're exploring when you have your smart grid capability. So I think that over the day, you will get a, a flavor of what's going on, what's happening, where are we? 
who is doing it, and how it's being done. We will probably not answer all your questions, so please put the questions in the system, and we will pick up the questions during the day, and any questions that we can't answer we will, uh, today, we will find a way to get them to you after the meeting. To start our utility session off, my colleague Irfan will take IOE, IoT, and bring it to the utilities industry. Irfan? Uh, thank you. Do I need the microphone or should I? Yes. For yes. Video. For the video. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Irfan Ali. I run Global Sales Strategy for IoT and IOE at Cisco. And uh, what I'm going to, you know, what, what's interesting is Anil's presentation yesterday, uh, sorry, this morning, right? Uh, he mentioned that also the first part of the presentation was done by Haji, and the second part was done by the, the person from Toshiba. I would say the first slides that I have are probably covered uh, also in the other presentation, but I think we'll, we'll talk about the nuances on how that applies uh, to utilities, right? So if, I know that as we were sitting on the table, there was a question about, so what's the difference between IoT and IOE? So was that sufficiently clear? Uh, that was presented this morning. Is that pretty much everybody clear on it, or should I should I expand on it a little bit? Who who says they're clear? Okay, sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's go with. <laughs> so you know, one of the things that uh, you know, just to kind of level set, I think everybody's talking about IOE or in or digitization, digitization, right? Because in Europe, that's what they talk about mostly. Uh, but it's the same thing. I think what they're talking about is how do we digitize everything together and connect everything, everything together. And Forbes magazine had that is right now, Internet of Thing is at the complete hype curve. You know, you're, last year, last few years, you heard a lot about big data if you're in IT. Now it's all about IoT and IOE, right? So I think our prediction is that we are just at the beginning of this discussion. I think if you if you looked at I thought I thought the the two slides that Anil covered as far as the Edison's you know the the Ideola uh, and then you know the iPod that how that technology has evolved because of regulations consumerization etc versus the the the, grid, the smart grid system right I mean the electrical system distribution system I think that that's right at the beginning and it moves at a different pace so I think it'll be there for you know there's a window of our opportunity and window of time when people will, will start moving that route. But once they start moving, I think it'll be a, 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 a huge, much bigger momentum. So you saw this slide. So I, I think we, you know, the interesting is world population, number of devices going up. So I won't cover that. But why is that happening? So on one hand, things, if you look for, follow Moore's love, uh, law, then technology is getting cheaper, number one. Number two is if you follow Metcalf's law, Metcalf's law that the more connections you have, the more value you have. Right? That thing that's, I mean, besides going, without going into, into too much detail, the more things you have connected, the more opportunities you have to extract value from those things. And then the other one is if the whole dynamic around big data and how we're doing analytics, and now we, at Cisco we have a concept of analytics uh, in a way that we talk about big data, which is data at rest. That means it's in a repository, it's transaction data that you're storing that you can correlate together to make a decision versus data in motion, which is the data that we have from the Internet of Things, because as you're collecting data from sensors, that's perishable data. You need to do something with that data immediately, otherwise it just gets, you know, uh, the value of it is, is now, uh, or, or, you're just, or it's just something that you're storing for later. But if you want to, if, you if, you if you're on a, on a transportation system where you have a, a train going, you know, at you know, uh, you know, 150 kilometers per hour, you want to, and that train, there's another train coming from the other direction, and you need to make an action now. Uh, in oil and gas, you need to make an action now. In, in, our, in, in the utilities industry, if, if you have a, a power situation where you have uh, you know, a brownout potential because of, of demand, you need to make a decision now. So how do you make those, how do you take that data analytics um, and then add value to it to bring um, actions to the IoT? So we're going actually through a transition from a, from a situation where we are data anemic, where we don't have enough data to make a decision, uh, or insight and to make changes and come up with innovation becomes very slow to an area where it's near real time, right? And, uh, and we can make sure decisions faster. If you combine that with the, what Anil talked about, how much data is being created on an on a annual basis, it's getting exponentially growing, right? So if you look at, you know, he talked about 90% of world's data is created in the last two years. Uh, 
you know, data will be, uh, in 2020, 40% of the data that we will have will be created from sensors, from devices that is coming to us. But how do you convert that data then into information to eventually knowledge to eventually wisdom on how you run your business? That's the key. So there's the concept of internet of everything that talks about how things interact with, with uh, and how things create data that interacts with processes that applies to, gives it in the hands of people that can make a decision based on that data. But that's pretty st straightforward. The challenge is how do you correlate that? And you know, the, the one thing that we found as we work with more and more companies is technology typically is not the impeding factor. The impeding factor tends to be the operations and processes of the company, typically. Uh, you know, we have a saying at Cisco that we use for a while that, you know, you know, culture will eat strategy for lunch every day of the week. In, meaning that the culture of a company and how you do things, it doesn't matter how great of a strategy you have or the technology you have, but unless you take, unless you internally you're able to embrace it, it's, it's not going to do you any good, right? So I think that's the, the potential for the economic value that Anil talked about. Uh, does that make sense? Okay. So we, I think Anil talked about this in a second. I'll, I'll bring it back to what it means in the key verticals that we focus on from an IoT perspective, and I'll, I'll, I'll come to energy in a second. So these are the main, uh, the main verticals in which we feel that, you know, th that there's a, the maximum potential to make a, a transition faster, right? Transitions are happening in these spaces uh, versus other verticals like FS, uh, you know, financial services, healthcare, and retail that have embraced technology already. They're actually moving down the path faster as a vertical versus these verticals who are now entering that technology era to be, be able to innovate using this technology. You agree? Yeah, I think if you, you've seen it already in a lot of those things, right? Um, in, in, in the US, there's Chase Bank. I don't know if they service this geography, but Chase Bank, you can take a picture of, uh, of a check and it gets deposited into your account directly. I think the, those types of services were before, if you had thought about a ch taking a picture of a check and depositing it into your account would be, oh my gosh, security-wise, it'd be impossible, right? How would you trust that? But now it's, it's common fact. I think we, we have a level of trust in the technology process and being able to implement technology within it. So, you know, as we work with different, different verticals in different country, uh, different companies, you can see in some cases, uh, Dundee is a mining company, 400% uh, increase in production because of enabling sensors within their, within their facilities, having Wi-Fi 10,000, you know, 10 miles underneath the ground. Uh, to be able to have wearables on their on their uh, uh, on their miners, uh, to be able to see and sense what if they're digging in the right right direction, they are they hitting the right ore or not. So that's very critical for them. Uh, Black and Decker, same thing, and in, in this in the manufacturing plant on how they can improve uh, efficiency of their production in in uh, uh, limit the scrap that they have, and you can see others. But these are general ones. We'll get to. Uh, in our own vertical. So in our utility, you know, the CXOs, uh, what's on top of their mind? So we have, uh, we internally, we have, uh, and, and this is available for you guys as, as far as uh, how we think about the industry. But let me, I'm going to validate these to see if they make sense with you, right? So we want to make sure we align the market with the regulation and public policy. I think that's key number one. That's why Neil mentioned that the same thing. You know, one of the things that's limiting the most around these technologies, and in fact, we were talking about it a little bit earlier with Dave, that you know, one of the things that uh, technology is moving so fast that, that governments and, and, and policy is not able to keep up with that, innovate, that change of, of, uh, uh, of business processes. So typically, uh, when, when the government or the policymakers don't understand the technology, they do a deny all. Just don't do it, right? Uh, because they don't understand it. So they want to make sure they stop it so they can analyze it, put a committee together, and then maybe come up with a recommendation of what you, how you move forward. But the challenge is, in the meantime, you, there's there, the opportunity there, uh, the technology is already ready, it, it, that can be easily implemented. But So it, it's in our best interest as we work with you, and I don't know how close you're connected with your, your government uh, and government officials, but I think how can we educate all of them together so that we can come up with that uh, technology advance faster. Asset optimization, I think that's clearly, I think that's probably uh, in, in one of your top priorities. Workforce productivity, safety, new skills, knowledge transfer. I think we talked, to, uh, Anil talked about, talked about you know, workforce 
aging and how do you how do you getting new talent and new new uh, new skills into your workplace investment protection uh, from a, from what you already have to what you want to transition to and then the bottom line that we feel is paramount in any IOT environment is security because unless you can do it securely um, and I forget who I don't know who I was talking to earlier uh, we were talking about the the, I think we were talking about the, 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 you know, the next generation warfare. I think you know, what's happening is you know, if, you, if you're putting uh, your, 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 your grid online, if you will, right, and you're putting all your services online, now what is the chance of some foreign entity to be able to come in and, and, and hack into it, just like they do with networks? And we've seen examples throughout the world where that is happening. So how do you, um, how do we collectively make sure that what we have is secure, is manageable, is trackable, and uh, we are able to, to talk about it, you know, how can we do it safely and securely and uh, be, you know, in a part of our business process. Anything else that is not on this list that is top of your mind? Pretty comprehensive list, it covers most of it. Yeah, if there's any others, please let us know. I think there was. Uh, I think most of you guys were talking about how do you enter, uh, how do you innovate within the company, uh, you know, introduce new technologies, and uh, and infrastructure for smart grid. So I think all of those kind of fall into those. The key one is security. Nobody brought up, you know, how do we do this securely? I think that's the one that 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 we can work collectively, and we have a whole architecture that speaks to that. <clears throat> so the the other um, the other day I was reading. Uh, 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 an article in the Foreign Affairs uh, uh, magazine, and the other things that they mention that, that that you may be considering already, and let me know if this makes sense to you. Right, is solar power is becoming more and more prevalent. At least we're seeing that because because it's there's, there's technological innovations there. Government regulations are getting more lenient towards it, or more accepting on how you can connect it to the grid. Uh, and then you know, uh, manufacturing of those panels is is is, is getting cheaper. So it's becoming more and more accessible to, diff to different folks. At least, does, if, I don't know if, uh, in, in, in ASEAN how uh, prevalent that is, but it's becoming more and more prevalent uh, around the world. Does that make sense? Yes? Uh, and solar and wind, I would imagine they all fall in the same category. And then one of the, the other things that's happening is we're seeing um, energy, uh, energy storage uh, batteries at scale, in, you know, grid, grid level and home are becoming more and more available. Um, you know, one great example is Tesla Motors, in, at least the, the, in the U.S., that they've, that they've implemented those electric cars. You guys are familiar with Tesla? Yeah. So what, one of the things that, that uh, you may not know is that a battery in uh, the 85-kilowatt the, uh, the battery in a Tesla car can power an average size home for three days. Right? So interesting thought process because Tesla is building a super mega uh, facility in Nevada to do not only innovations on the cars, but also on batteries. And so, how, why is that important? Now, if, if a lot of folk homes are getting solar power, or companies are getting solar power, and they're able to store that, because you, know, you don't have the sun when your utilization is at the maximum. Typically, you know, people go home and turn on their air conditioning and TV and everything else after they go home, which is after the sun is almost set. So you need a way to store energy and to be able to distribute it. And, and then there's models on how can you give that energy back into the grid Right? to be a net zero, at least what they call a net zero sum in the U.S., and so you don't have to pay for energy. So how, does the, how do you work with those? How does, the, you know, how does the next generation grid work with that type of environment when they're coming up with these types of technologies that are coming out? So I think that's one interesting, and then, and then upgrading the grid. I think that you know, as you take advantage of renewable power of different sources, and you take into account that energy technology, uh, energy storage technology is getting better, how does that encompass into your strategy? How many of you are already looking at that as part of your strategy? Okay, so there may be, uh, you guys are at BC Hydro, of course, but I think that that's one of the things we can talk about. On, on, does that make sense for you to look at? And the other one, it, this is more of a, a, a different kind of spin. Uh, Power to the poor, because there's two billion people out of the, you know, almost, well, I think we surpassed seven billion. Seven billion people in the world, two billion don't have access to ele electricity. So that's, that's an alarming number. And, and they, one, of the, one of the thought processes is if you want to fight poverty, give people electricity. 
Because what can you do with electricity? I think Anil talked about it. You, know, you, you have access to education through internet. You have access to jobs because you can connect remotely to the different things. So there's a lot of benefits by being able to do this. But how do you do that in remote areas? You can't extend your grid there. So are, are there other technologies that you can implement to get there? Make sense? All right. So what we need is uh, uh, an intelligent energy system that, that is observable, that it can be, mon that it can be monitored, can monitor different aspects of itself. Uh, it, can, uh, it can be automated so that it can re adapt rapidly to different changes that are happening within it. And that means that you know, it's taking advantage of those all those connections. Uh, it has to be intelligent. That means that goes back to that analytics piece to be able to, to shift things and shift power uh, and power consumption based on, or different aspects of power based on, uh, on usage and peak hours. And, um, and, there, and, and I think that in some cases, most, most systems are designed for to be able to manage peak, but you typically don't reach peak all the time. So then how do you, how do you redesign that environment to be able to take advantage of the steady state? And then transactive. Uh, and this, this goes to dynamically linking, dynamically linking into diverse and distributed markets. That's an interesting, and I, maybe we can talk about it in the new technologies and where we're going next, but I think that's, that's another aspect of that, on how we want to think about uh, intelligent systems around this. So uh, the, what we're seeing a trend as far as industry is going, do, undergoing a major overhaul in the sense that you know, reliability is going up based on taking advantage of some of these technologies. Right? I think uh, uh, the outages, um, the increasing uh, an increase in large grid outages in 2005, 2009 versus the previous four years has increased. So actually, actually, sorry, reliability is going down. Uh, peak capacity, uh, uh, this is US based numbers, but basically you have, you're, you have wasted, uh, you have wasted capacity because you're not able to maximize uh, the utilization of that, uh, the grid. Um, the other thing is that globally $1 trillion will be invested into, into the grid. Uh, so that's a huge market for all of us if you're either selling to the grid or implementing the grid on what you should be expecting. And then uh, what, what's, what's required is what we're talking about from an Internet of Things standpoint is the time to response. So how do you, are you able to make that grid dynamic enough to take advantage of balancing the supply and the demand? Any questions thus far? So we have, a, we have a, a number of, in our groups, we have a number of solutions in different verticals. We're going to talk about the energy one in the middle. Um, but so these are specifically some of the solutions that we have uh, fully blown out architectures and use cases around that I, I don't, I think they require a much more deep, deeper dip, deep dive. So if you want to set up some time with, uh, with your local accounting, we can probably go through that in, in a, in a in a second, but you'll see examples from BC Hydro and Itron on how they are well integrated into this, and uh, BC Hydro has implemented a lot of this already. So, but we have field area networks, AMI, distribution automation architectures, uh, connected field workforce architectures, and then substation automation. So, it, just to give you an example of our grid grid block, uh, the connected utility approach. So, we have a reference architectural model that we have that we can, you know, it's it's a reference. So, it's probably seventy percent of what you would think about as the uh, as your future state, and then we work with you on, you know, doing that other thirty that is particular to your organization. Uh, within it, you can run several applications based on that architecture. And those architecture applications are tied to use cases. So we step through on how each one of the, whatever you want to get accomplished, how it would be accomplished, and how that ties into the architecture. Uh, and we have specific uh, examples of architecture based on those use cases that are part of the reference model. So like I said, this is a representative example of the, of the solution, but you know, we can get in much deeper detail uh, with our architects on how that works for you. So uh, th here are some examples of companies that have implemented some of these solutions in different aspects. Um, BC Hydro, you'll hear from a second, but uh, you can see uh, the outcome uh, that they experienced was $11 savings per year per customer uh, on average. But B uh, for example, BC Hydro, $22 million uh, with their 2 million customers that they have under their management. Um, so you, you hear more about them directly. But there's examples of what we're doing with oil fields, 
and what we do with pipelines may not apply to you directly, so that I'm just skipping over them quickly. But there's other things that we're doing as far as monitoring leakages uh, in pipelines. And if you also service water utilities uh, as part of your network, that might be of interest because you know, 20, you know, typically you see 20% loss in pipelines um, uh, from leakages, both from oil and, and uh, water. And why do we believe that we, we are in a position to uh, help you through this journey is because I think, you know, if you look at what we're involved in, we not only do we have the network platforms, uh, both in cloud and infrastructure, data center and fog. Are you guys familiar with fog? I know we talked about fog. Uh, who's not familiar with fog technologies or just edge, edge computing? Okay. All right. So. I'll put my hand <laughs> You put your hands up. Can you explain okay. it to me, please? No, so, <laughs> so basically, uh, just to, you, you, you know what cloud is, you know, cloud technology, and you know what infrastructure is that you buy on-prem. But there's a notion of edge computing, meaning that as you aggregate sensors and their data, at the edge of the network, you need some intelligence to be able to run applications and control at that level so that you can take advantage of some action. Because if you, if you had to take all that sensor data and send it to the cloud, make some an, a decision and send it back, like for example, if you're, um, uh, you know, in a, in a, the easiest example is probably uh, uh, in, in the oil field, you know, you have uh, water injection, water in, in production. If you're filling up a tank very fast, you need to shut down uh, and divert the water somewhere else so that the tank doesn't overflow. Well, if you wait for, for you to send that signal from the sensors up to the cloud and back to turn on the actuator or turn off the, the valve, you're limited by the speed of light on how quickly that signal can be sent to the cloud, you know, computated and come back, right? So you need something in, the local, in, in that environment to be able to look at the data, say, hey, you overshot the threshold, make, take this action and then send the update to the cloud so, they, so that your monitoring systems know that that change happened because of this alert but the change happened, right? So you averted that, that tank overflowing. Does that make sense? Because what we have, uh, in, we have uh, in, in our, what we have enabled, and maybe we can get back in, into it in a little bit more detail, in our routers, uh, we, we have a Unix kernel where you can write applications right to that Unix kernel. So besides running this, the, the router software, there's another core that runs this Unix kernel. So you can write an application to that to monitor the data that's going through that router in real time. And that's what we mean by edge computing. You can, only, you can also store the data if you need to and then send updates. So you don't have to send every stream up to the cloud because then you're bandwidth constrained. You just send the summary uh, of that data. So that's fog computing. It's, it's actually a pretty cool innovation if, you can, if, we, if we want to find out more about it. We have a technology portfolio of all, all the different things you see from not, not only from the kind of routing switching but security, network management, application enablement. We also have an investment fund for IOE. So if, you're, if you are working with a startup or if you're a company that, that is looking to create uh, uh, applications or you know, build anything on our top of our infrastructure, uh, we, have a, we have a fund that we can we help you seed uh, investment in that, in, uh, innovation into that. And we also have innovations of IOE innovation centers around the world. We just announced the one in Australia last week. Um, so, but we have the others here, and then we have plans to, do, to open four more. And these innovation hubs is where you know, startups and companies meet to create value. So if you're, if, for example, if you want to partner with us and other ecosystem partners to come up with an application to help you manage your grid better, that, that would be where we would house that, and the innovation center would help facilitate that. The IoT World Forum events like this one, the next one is in Dubai in December. Well, that's the worldwide one. Which we have, uh, which is much bigger, and we have much more um, uh, partners, and you see a lot more examples of how we can take collectively work together to take advantage of IoT and IOE. We have global ecosystem partners uh, that that we work with. Itron is one of them that's here today, and then we work with global standards because a lot of the stuff that we're working on does not exist. So I think we have to work with standards to make sure that we can incorporate all of those technologies together. So with that, uh, I'll finish off with this to say, you know, where are you in your journey, right? And how can we partner together? So you'll hear more about how, uh, how BC Hydro has done it. You'll hear how ITRON and, uh, and ours, we are partnered together to make that happen. But where is your business process innovation? What are the problems that you want to solve from a business standpoint? Uh, we, you have a technology architecture already uh, 
worked out. If not, we, we would like to help you with that. And what's the role of IT in, in your IoT environment? Do you, are you working closely with IT or, or you're, you're trying to solve the problem yourself and then, and then work together? So it goes back to org structures, right? Because that's, it ha those two things have to work together. And then we talked about you know, process and cultural changes that you need to make as you take more on this you know, innovative adaptive mode on the new grid. Because it takes a different level of thinking. And then the main one for us is security and privacy. Any questions? A lot to absorb, I know. So hopefully, the, my, my job was to take what you heard in that room and bring it now into the in, utility context. And what you're going to hear next uh, is presenters are going to take it to the next level. So back to you. Thank you. Irvan, thank you very much. Irvan leads our strategy and operations for IoT. And uh, this was a very high level overview and we fully realized that this was a lot of information. A lot. Probably the takeaway, when you take IoT, which we consider connecting the things and managing the data out of the things, that covers IoT for us. Combine that with people, collaboration, making faster decisions, making better decisions, changing processes, creating new business value that you couldn't create before. That's what we call IOE. We really bring it to life. And I think what Ervan showed you is probably the, the, the possibilities are endless. It is how much can you imagine to change your business or what are the biggest challenges that you're facing that we can address by applying new technology. But it starts with what you heard this morning also, change the way you're thinking. I was asked to tell you that there are actually prizes, great prizes for people who ask questions. Oh, I know, I know. What well, it's, it's still, it's, okay, it's, what are it's, the prizes? It, <laughs> what are the prizes? Best question. They're great. They're great. They're great prices. And they're green. <laughs> no, there are prices. So that, that I wanted to say. After this overview, which is probably overwhelming, and I, I expect you will exit, get access to the presentations so that you can read them again and that we will have follow-up so that if questions come later through your account manager or your Cisco contact, you can get access to anyone who gave a presentation here today and we can get the answer to your question to you. So 